Hello and welcome to my review of Doctor Who Season 12 Episode 3 Orphan 55. I'm going to confess to something, this just feels like a part two to the previous video I did where I reviewed the two-part story Spyfall, which was the season opener for Season 12, but for you it's a separate video because I'm recording them at exactly the same time. And I'll be doing that for Episode 4 as well. Yeah, anyway, look, I, I'm basically four episodes behind. I decided to do video reviews of these things while the, sh the season's already kind of going and we're nearly halfway through, whatever. I'll try and do them weekly, try and be able to cover the episodes as they come out and uh, try and be a bit more on track in the future. But this time around, I'm talking about the much maligned <laughs> Orphan 55. I've got mixed feelings about this one. I don't hate it as much as a lot of the Doctor Who fandom slash fan community slash Whovians, whatever you want to call them. But I also didn't love it. I didn't think the message was too heavy handed either. People are saying that the message and the speech at the end and the final shot, which is where it crossed the line for me, to be honest, was a little bit over the top, a little bit heavy handed. There was too much of a, a shove it down your throat climate message. But personally, I didn't think it was any more or less blatant than any sort of message in Doctor Who has been. For example, all the way back in the third Doctor's era, you've got the Green Death. I mean, the Daleks themselves are a commentary on Nazis and things like that. They're basically space Nazis. It's There's commentary all the way throughout Doctor Who, even, and I will admit it's done a lot better, but in the Zygon inversion, Peter Capaldi delivers an incredible speech and just makes me love him even more. But that is also a political message, a very blatant one at the time, ISIS had committed a number of terrorist attacks and the world was responding and there was bloodshed happening on both sides. And that was Stephen Moffat and the other writer, because that was co-written by someone else and I'm very sorry to have forgotten his name, but that was those two writers and the character of the Doctor going up against a war because war is a bad idea. Much better done than in this case, I think. I mean, I didn't hate this case and I didn't think Jodie Whittaker delivered the line badly or anything like that, but... It was better done then, but it was also incredibly on the nose, like this message. And like I hinted at earlier, the bit where it crossed the line was where we got this shot. That was just a little bit over the top. We kind of got the message from literally just the message. You didn't need a cut to the monster going, Rah! so that bit wasn't brilliant, but the rest of it I quite liked. Although it highlights a problem that happens quite a lot in this era of Doctor Who. Which is, despite the fact they've got three companions in the TARDIS, they write really big ensembles for each episode. They get in a lot of guest characters. Which would be fine if it was just the Doctor and one companion, then they'd be really interesting characters. But these other characters really detract from the TARDIS team, who already feel a little bit flat. I really like the actors playing the companions. I really, really think Bradley Walsh has knocked it out of the park. I think he's just hilarious, really poignant. Uh, has a great handle on the character of Graham, and I think Graham's the most fleshed out, followed by Ryan, who's had some really great in-depth moments. Resolution was certainly his episode, where he shone a lot, although he had a few really good moments here in Orphan 55. And unfortunately, Yaz is really underserved a lot, but I really like Mandip Gill. I think she's really talented. I think that uh, she can portray a strength to Yaz that hasn't been showcased enough, but I think she can really do it. I think she's got the skills for it, but they're just underusing her. And that happens when you bring in good guest stars and good guest characters, interesting ones or less interesting ones like Hyphen and the old couple in this who, no offense to the actors, but I found them intensely annoying. Just hearing an old lady say, Benny, Benny, where's my Benny? Got a bit annoying, but the others were pretty good. I liked the father-son relationship. I thought the makeup was a bit odd, but I think that was deliberate. It's an alien planet. Stop it with your prejudice. Green hair in that hairstyle isn't much to be judged on that planet, obviously. Um, <laughs> I just thought it looked a bit silly. So did Hyphen. Hyphen looked worse because they've done better cat people before and Hyphen looked like she was meant to be a bit of a cat. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, cat on Red Dwarf has always looked better than that cat. But anyway, um... <laughs> There are things that I really liked. I kind of like the mother-daughter relationship as well that was revealed. Oh, by the way, spoilers. I said spoilers at the beginning of the other review, that's why. But yeah, spoilers for this episode. But a lot of people won't really care because they feel like there isn't much to the plot. But I thought it was a pretty good story. I thought it was kind of, it really did remind me of a kind of season two David Tennant episode. 
or season three, where they turn up and the adventure's already happening, or the, not the adventure, the situation's already happening and they turn up and they get involved in it. And I kind of like that. I like that sort of story a lot. It happened a few times with Capaldi and Matt Smith as well, but I feel like it's a very David Tennant era style of storytelling. And I do enjoy that. Actually, Nikola Tesla episodes got that as well. But I quite liked it. Um, I thought the effects were great. I thought that uh, the... I've forgotten the characters' names. It's because I've only actually seen it once. I could only be bothered to watch it once. <laughs> But I thought the mother-daughter relationship, that dynamic was interesting at least. But again, you throw in interesting twists and character moments for guest stars while you've got characters there who have had very little to do for a year and a half now. Or a season and a half. Nearly two and a half years. Wow. I think this highlights a lot of my issues with this era. And I'll actually do a video about this era at some point, just talking about its downfalls as well as its strong points which is a bit tough because we've gone from my favorite era I mentioned it in my previous video but Stephen Moffat's era was my favorite Chris Chibnall's isn't it's not my least favorite either but it's just not great <laughs> for me it's not well it's not brilliant it's not terrible it's just somewhere in the middle it has a lot of potential uh, I feel like almost every episode with very few exceptions needs another draft of the script to get the tone equal, to get the pace a bit faster, and to maybe give the main characters something more to do at the expense of the guest characters, because I'd rather be saying, you know what, those guest characters were interesting, I wish they'd fleshed them out, instead of saying, why are all these companions there? There's no need to have so many, which is what a lot of us are saying. Sadly, I honestly think they could make a three-person, no, a three-companion TARDIS team work because it's a four person if you include the doctor but anyway i think they can make three companions work it's a challenge they've set for themselves and they don't always live up to it but i think if they just wrote a bit harder a bit better worked towards a more equal uh spread of character moments and dramatic moments and opportunities for actors to perform their best because i think these guys are really good all three of them i think they are good and i think if they had the opportunity to do so more more people would think so as well if they did that then I think the three companions could work. It's harder. They've set that challenge for themselves, but now they've got to commit to it, and they haven't been. So ultimately, I think I'm desperately trying to look for things to say about this episode, because I've only seen it once, and I couldn't be inspired to watch it again. I didn't hate it. Yes, the message was on the nose. I don't think it was more or less on the nose than previous messages. Uh, I think they could have done better. And thankfully, I already know that they did in the next episode. So I'm going to finish this video here. So this episode was absolutely not the best episode of this era. Not the worst, but probably down there. But I didn't hate it. So uh, I'll leave you for now. Please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this episode, what you're thinking of this season overall, what you think of the cast, what you think of the characters, anything you want to say, please leave a comment down below. But I just want to say leave it respectfully. Don't, you know, attack anyone for their acting ability, their appearance or anything like that. Criticise it all you want and say it's not up to scratch, it's not as good as previous companions or actors or whatever, or head writers or whatever it is. But don't go after them, don't call them, don't insult them like calling them dumb and don't call for them to be fired because that's not helpful for anyone because that's not going to happen just yet. They'll leave on their own accord, I mean. <laughs> so leave a comment, but just be nice about it. <laughs> and uh, stick around for the next video, which... I'll also record now. <laughs> I'll be talking about Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you then.